Hello, welcome to Management Science Studio. I am Vahid Lotfi and I am an Emeritus Professor of Management Science. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use Microsoft Excel to simulate a single channel queuing model. So let's get started. Here is an example of a single channel uh, queuing model. Customers arrive at a coffee shop according to a Poisson distribution. That is, the inter-arrival times are exponentially distributed with a mean inter-arrival time of 3 minutes. They are served according to a normal distribution with a mean of 2 minutes and a standard deviation of 1 minute. The manager wishes to know the probability that a customer is served immediately upon arrival that is the P0, and the average waiting time in the queue. Note, Excel does not have an inverse exponential function. Therefore, we will have to use the formula minus lambda ln of 1 minus P, where lambda is the mean interarrival time, ln is the natural log function, and P is the probability. Since we wish to generate exponentially distributed random variates from this distribution, we will use random numbers between 0 and 1 for p. So the formula becomes minus 3 times ln of 1 minus rand, which is the random number generator in Excel. I will use a separate worksheet to demonstrate the problem. Here is how I have laid this out. First, the parameters. We want to simulate the problem for 600 minutes, which will give us approximately 200 customers, because the mean inter-arrival time is about 3 minutes. The arrival distribution is exponential, mean is 3 minutes, service distribution is normal, mean of 2 minutes, and a standard deviation of 1. I will keep track of the customers in column B, inter-arrival times in column C, arrival time in column D, begin service time in column E, waiting time in column F, service time in column G, completion time in column H, and time in system in column I. First, we have to generate several rows in order to keep track of the simulation process. So I will start with customer numbers and because I'm guessing that we will have about 200 customers, I am just going to create about 220 um, rows uh, to keep track of the process. So we'll go ahead and go down, about here, take it up, maybe 250. Then we are going to enter the formula for the inter-arrival time. As I mentioned, um, because Excel does not have an inverse exponential function, I would have to enter the formula, which is minus lambda, that is in this case 3, and I'll make sure this is an absolute cell because I'm going to copy it, multiply to the natural log of, the natural log is a function within um, Excel, and its parameters are going to be 1 minus the random number generator RND. So here is the value for the inter-arrival time of the first customer. Next column is the arrival time. For the first customer, the arrival time is going to be the same as the inter-arrival time. Uh, the beginning of service is obviously immediate, which is going to be the same as the arrival time. Waiting time is the difference between beginning of service time and the arrival time. So the formula in this cell is going to be equal to the value in this cell minus the value in this cell. 
obviously the first customer is not going to have to wait. The service time is obtained by the inverse of the normal distribution function. So I will select the function command and select the inverse normal uh, function and start entering the parameters. The first one is the probability, which we will just put in the random number generator. The second one is the mean, which we will take from this cell and make sure it's in absolute cell reference because we are going to copy it to other cells. And the standard deviation from this cell, again, we make it absolute cell reference and click OK. And here we have our service time. The completion time is going to be the beginning of service time plus the service time. So the formula in this cell is going to be equal to the beginning of service, which is here, plus the service time, which is here. Time in system is going to be the difference between completion time and the arrival time. So the value here is going to be equal to the completion time right there minus the arrival time which is right there. The formulas for the second customer are going to be slightly differently. The arrival time is going to be the same. So coming from the inverse of the exponential distribution, so I'm just going to copy the value in the cell for the first customer down to the second one. The arrival time of the second customer is going to be the arrival time of the previous customer plus the inter-arrival time. So the value in this cell is going to be equal to the arrival time of the previous customer plus and the inter-arrival time. Beginning of service time is going to be a little bit more involved. The beginning of service time is going to be the larger of the arrival time and the completion time of the previous customer. Uh, so the formula in this cell is going to be equal to if the arrival time of the second customer is greater than the completion time of the previous customer, then it's the arrival time, which is here. Otherwise, it's going to be the completion time of the previous customer. So the waiting time in the system is going to be the same formula as the first one. So I'll just copy it and see what happens. Okay, well, uh, Excel is recalculating the cells. So in this case, the completion time of the first customer is 3.5 minutes, whereas the arrival time of the second customer is 7 so the customer doesn't have to wait. But this keeps changing as uh, we generate new uh, values for these variables. So the service time for the second customer is going to come from the same probability distribution. So I will just copy the cell. The completion time for the second customer, the formula is going to be the same as that of the first one. So we just make a copy of that. And here we go. And finally, the time in system formula is going to be the same as the first one. So here we have. So now we have values for the first two customers. Uh, we can see that the first customer arrived at one and a half minutes, began service at one and a half minutes. There was no wait. Service time for this first customer was 0.6 minutes. Completion time was 2.12, which is the addition of 0.6 plus 1.5 and time in system was 0.605, which was really just the service time. We can look at the second customer at arrived 0.45 minutes later. Therefore, the arrival time was 1.97, which is 0.45 plus 1.5. And because the arrival time of the second customer was smaller than the completion time of the first customer, beginning of service of the second customer has to wait to the time 2.127 and the waiting time was 1 point, point and the waiting time was 0.14 
service time for the second customer was 2.7 minutes, a completion time of 4.899 minutes, and time in system was 2.926. Now we can take the second row and just copy it all the way to the last um, row that we have created. So I'll just highlight this cell and take the corner and copy it all the way down to the customer, the last customer. And we can see that Excel generated all of the numbers. Now that I have all of these um, roughly 250 customers, let's check out and see uh, what was the last time that the customer arrived. So the arrival time of the last customer, let's check that out. We can see that it's 773 minutes and we wanted to uh, simulate um, this problem for just 600 minutes. I'll go ahead and keep this data since it accounts for exactly um, 250 customers. Now I'm going to go back and start calculation of the statistics. Um, starting with customer arrival, we have 250 customers. Number waiting will be the number of arrivals that had to wait or they had a positive waiting time. So this is going to be equal to count if parentheses the range which is the waiting time and the condition which is greater than zero and uh, let's see what happens. So we have 175 customer that had a positive waiting time. The probability of wait obviously is going to be equal to the number who waited divided by total number of customers and that gives us about 0.58 and the probability of no wait or P0 is equal to 1 minus the probability of wait which is about 0.3 in this case so we can see Roughly 70% of the customers had to wait and roughly 32% of the customers were served immediately. Now for the average wait time, I can just do the average command equal to average of uh, the waiting times. And that's about 1.6 minutes. Now, let's say that we wanted to uh, see what happens if we reduce the service time to the probability of no wait. Right now, about 36% of the customers are served immediately. Let's say that is not enough and we wanted to increase that. So I can just go ahead and change the service time. Let's say I change it to 1.75 minutes and see what happens to uh, the P0. We can see that P0 went from 0.36 or 0.32 to 0.45. So now 45% of the arrivals are served immediately and 55% have to wait. And that is how we conduct a simulation of a single channel uh, queuing model with exponential uh, inner arrival times and normal service time.